know. Let's see. For some reason, it's telling me we have a low internet connection. Let me know if you can see me. If not, I can move because I am in a bad spot, really, in the house. So, let me at least move to Chris's side. The internet doesn't work real good right there. It is Friday, y'all. My sister's going to come spend the night with me. So, I decided I'd do Bible study early. I have only seen you one day this week. It has been absolutely nutso. Uh, but because of me, mostly, I decided that I was going to redo the website. I spent two whole... Let me take these out of my ears so I'm not yelling at y'all. It took me two entire days to do that website. I mean, from early... I finished it one, at 1 o'clock in the morning last night. And then the dogs woke me up early. But I think it looks really nice. So if y'all haven't had a chance to look at it, please go look at it. It's got some really cute little sayings that you can, you know, use in your house if you want to make your own little signs. Um, I bought a package. I buy little packages that are um, on a website that have all of this stuff that's already illustrated. And then I can bring it in and use it as backdrops if I buy the copyright to it. And so everything on my site, that's what I've done that for. So um, it's really neat, it's fun to do, and it's work, but it's fun. At the same time, I cleaned it up really well. I fixed it so um, if they're doing advertisements, they can only put them where I allow them to. I did that early this morning, so my, some of y'all may have went in before I got that done. Um, and on the backgrounds, on my, on my, um, you know, like on my utensils and things like that, I made sure they all had a, the same color background. So, I mean, I really uh, worked hard on it. Now, with that said, I have been out of the word for a few days. I have felt blue. I have felt empty. I have felt lonely. I have missed my mother. It has just been that kind of week. It's rainy outside. It's cold. So I'm sure I'm not the only one on here this evening that has been feeling those crazy feelings this week. There's something about the weather. It does affect our moves, don't it? So I thought to myself, well, Chris is going to run. He'll probably walk in any minute. Um, I had to get some paperwork done while he was gone, but We've been doing paperwork still for our loan, and we've been really busy, but um, my sister's coming, and I thought, man, I am going to get in the Word of God. I am going to listen to my Audible Bible, and I'm going to talk to my um, Facebook family on Real Southern Woman before everybody gets back, okay? So um, I went in, and it, it's a hard thing to even read this week. Um, we are reading in Exodus. We are talking about the story of Moses uh, getting the people out of Egypt. Um, I am going to go through chapter 10 today, and then we'll pick up with chapter 11. Now, I've made a few quick notes. I'm going to just go through those notes, and I'm also going to let you listen to my Audible Bible just a little bit, because there's some parts in it that are real um, powerful, okay? And I want you to hear them. So I urge you, even if you don't normally listen to my Bible studies, please stay on today and just listen one time. It's the Word of God. It's not going to hurt you. Um, it is a wonderful thing that we have that He's allowed us to have, and we should read it more. It's the best book that's ever been written on the face of the earth. It was written by our holy God through the Holy Spirit. And so many of us don't listen to it. We don't read it. It can help us so much if we just take the time out to see what God has to say about different things in our life. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example today when I was listening to this, what it makes me think of. Um, another thing, political, the last two days have been political, the trials on TV. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, I love you dearly. I could care less what you are. I would hope that you could care less what I am. We all have a right to believe however we want to believe, just like with religion. And we should, we should respect each other, no matter who we are. Um, and, and I will say that, and I truly mean it. I truly love each and every one of you. Because what matters is that we believe in Jesus Christ, that we know we're um, 
redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We know where we're going when we pass away, and it can be any minute. Nobody knows when they're going to go. Nobody knows what God has in store for you in your life. And so as long as we know that, as long as we can agree on that, then we can, we can be happy and love each other through Christ Jesus, okay? And I really want to be able to do that. Um, so with that said, we're going to start reviewing this. I'm going to turn my computer around. My computer has the Audible on it. Chris is, I mean, my new computer, I gave Chris my old computer, okay? So, um, he's still got some apps on here that I don't have on my new computer. Oh, and I want to get a drink of tea. I'll be ready in a minute, y'all. I set up to, to talk to y'all on the other side. But the internet's terrible on that side of the couch. Okay. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at my new cutting boards, but I'm really excited about those. The guy that made them, is he looks redheaded. I haven't really specifically asked him personally, are you a redhead? But he sure looks like one. And that's just tickles me pink too, because I just love redheads. But anyway, <laughs> um, let's talk about this. How about it? We are, um, let me grab my note. Where'd I go? Oh, it's in my bottle. Well, that would be a good place, wouldn't it? Woo! Moses is going to lead the people out of Egypt. Moses, an ordinary man that doesn't even have good speech. Would be me, for sure, because I can't come out with the right words worth a flip when I'm cooking or when I'm doing this or when I'm doing anything, and I never remember anything. My kids and their friends, they all make fun of me. But that's just the way it is. I was thinking today when I was watching that trial, if I had to come up and testify about something, they may as well just forget it because I could I can't even remember what I done yesterday, much less what I done two years ago. So um I would be in big trouble. Okay. Um, but we are in Exodus. I'm gonna start in chapter five. And the reason I'm starting in chapter five is because I want us to see that. Even if we don't understand why, let me pull y'all a little bit closer to me. Y'all are too far away. Even if we don't understand why sometimes we go through trials in this life and we go through things in our life and we don't understand and we get aggravated and we get uh, down about it and we don't understand why we're having to go through this and why things aren't going our way and what in the world's going on. And if there's a God up there in heaven, what in the world is he doing? And, and, and is he not a fair God? You know what I mean? So, um, I thought of that when I was listening to this chapter, chapter 5 in Exodus. Those poor people um, went through a lot of stuff that the Egyptians had to go through at the same time. So, they were put through hardships to prove a point and to show the Egyptians that our God is the real God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God, God of Jacob. And they had to live through some of this stuff. Now, some of the things they were put aside and God gave them, you know, he didn't put the plague on them, in other words. But some of these things they did go through. The very first thing that happened uh, before the plagues even started is that Moses goes to him and he asks him, can his people go out so that they can make a sacrifice to the Lord? And he gets mad. So he takes the, the Hebrews' straw and he cuts the amount of straw they got. They were supposed to be making bricks. They were slaves. And he cut the straw that he gave them, but expected them to continue to make the bricks and the same number of bricks. And I thought to myself when I was listening to that, how awful would that be? Well, if you were a man and you went to work and all of a sudden, you didn't have the supplies you needed and you knew you were responsible and you knew this Pharaoh was going to uh, punish you for it. What in the world? I mean, you would just want to just die. I mean, you really would. Um, so I want you to listen to a little bit of this and I'm going to find my place um, in here. But just listen to um, the strength of this and how those people felt. Because if you think you feel bad because you're going through something, 
I want you to see that sometimes God does have his people go through things that is not pleasant so that they can be blessed later. So you have to have faith that that's what he's doing in your life. Now these people grumbled and they mumbled and they were mad. But just listen. Um, I'm going to let you listen to just a couple of sections of it. And it might take me a minute to find a couple of them because on the Audible Bible, you just kind of got to find your place. There's no, like, they don't t show you where you are. So let's just listen for a minute. Uh, Moses has went to the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh is going to respond here to Moses. This is his first time that he asks the Pharaoh, will you pe please let my people go? But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen, You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks, as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your straw yourselves wherever you can find it but your work will not be reduced in the least. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work, your daily task each day, as when there was straw. And the foremen of the people of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and were asked, Why have you not done all your task of making bricks today and yesterday, as in the past? Then the foreman of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks, and behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle, you are idle. That... Well, why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your... I met Moses and Aaron were waiting for them as they came out from Pharaoh, and they said to them, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. Okay, so is that not just heart-wrenching? To me, it is. And the sad part is that Pharaoh mocked, of course, God, which he, sh I mean, he's a man that doesn't believe in God. He thinks it's all hogwash. So, of course, he's going to mock God, and he's going to make it hard on the people. So, he made it hard on the people, and the people go to Moses, and they're like, what have you done to us, you know, instead of helping us, you've hurt us. Little did they know, that's just the beginning, okay? So, I mean, he, they hadn't even got their feet wet yet, hardly. But they didn't know it. But, but Moses was just like, oh my Lord, what in the world have you gave me to do? And why are you doing this to my people? So, God was doing this to those people. Just like he does things in our life. That's not fun, and it's not easy to get through. Um, I am not one of these prosperity Christianity people. I do not believe the more spiritual you are, the, the more holier you are, the more you prosper. No, I don't believe that. Now, I believe that God does bless us, and I believe especially if you tithe and give to God, you can never be outgiven. In other words, he's going to bring it back to you. I believe that. So, I mean, I think that most people that do have financial problems probably do not give to God because I know that any time Chris and I give to God, um, we never 
are in a financial bind. But the minute we get ahead and we start hoarding it for ourselves, things start tearing up in the house or somebody gets sick or something happens. That's just the way it is. Now, um, that's another story in itself. I've never talked to y'all about that. But I'm telling you, our God, his word is true and what he says is true. And he blesses those who bless others. Now, with that said, you're going to go through some things. When I got cancer, I was in one of the most closest relationships with Christ that I had ever been in my life. I had just gotten finished reading the entire Bible. I had just finished doing several studies. I was very, very close to God. And that is when I got cancer. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has to do with molding you and shaping you and making you a person that he can use um, or making someone else in your life that person that he can use by what you're going through. It may not even affect you. It may not even be about you, but something good is going to come out of it. Um, and of course, we've seen that over and over already, just going through what we've read so far, just from Genesis to this five chapters in Exodus, to know that God uses people and he puts them in situations that aren't fun so that he can bless them later. Uh, now, with that said, that's the main point I want to make today, okay? Um, but he brought plagues on these people. He brought, he turned the water to blood, he turned all the water. That included the Hebrews and the Egyptians. He brought frogs in. That was the second plague. He brought gnats in. And every time, he, when he brought the blood, when he brought the frogs, and when he brought the gnats, the pharaohs, you know, um, sorcerers and magicians could do that as well. So that didn't really impress the pharaoh that much, okay? Um, and so then he brings in flies. Now, once he brings in the flies and the sorcerers cannot create the flies, Pharaoh gets a little worried and he says, oh, I'll let the people go. So he, he calls off the flies and Pharaoh changes his mind. But remember too, God hardens the heart of Pharaoh on purpose. So God can harden our hearts. Is that good? It's just God. He has control. That's what I try to tell y'all. He always has control and we always have to trust him. So then he brings in um, a livestock and he, and he uh, uh, kills all the livestock. Now, once he gets to livestock, he makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Hebrews. And the Hebrew people's livestock did not die. Okay, just the Egyptians. Now, then he brings in boils. Everybody got them. Uh, except the Hebrew people. And then he brings down hail. So any livestock that was left that he didn't get with the plague of the livestock, the hail gets them. Now, there was some people who had con were convinced already. Even if Pharaoh didn't believe it, they believed it. And if they got word, they got their livestock under shelter uh, to save them. And it wasn't the Hebrew people because do you know it says that in the land of Goshen, no hell fell, just the other places. Now, if you don't think for me, and you got to thinking, well, I thought the livestock thing killed all the livestock. Why would he bring in the hell to kill the livestock? Don't you think that those Egyptians came in after their livestock was gone and took the livestock of the slaves? I would think so. So they did have some livestock. So he gets rid of those with hell. And it says that the Pharaoh admits finally that he sinned. Now, this has to do with salvation, okay? And this has to do with believing in Christ. I want you to know that the only way to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. He says he's the way, the truth, and the light. And no man comes to the Father but by me. What he means by that is you have to believe in him. You have to believe that he came here and personally sacrificed himself 
in place of a holy lamb like they used to do in the Old Testament for our sin. Now, why do I bring that up? Because Pharaoh finally admits that he sinned. And now people think they can just be sitting around the house and want to be spiritual and go, oh, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray that I'm saved, that he'll save me. That's not salvation. The Holy Spirit was sent here to this earth to convict us of sin. He is the only one that can convict you of sin. Nobody else, nothing else. Now, the Word of God helps, of course, and it convicts, but the Holy Spirit brings it to you and convicts your heart and shows you that you're a sinner. Now, that, has, that is what has happened to Pharaoh, finally. It took seven plagues before Pharaoh admitted his sin, okay? Sometimes... My mama used to, um, my mama's gone and I miss her. But I remember when I got saved, um, we had a preacher that preached on hell when I was young. And she was not happy about it. She didn't know if I was saved. And she didn't like it because I got saved when the preacher preached on hell. And she didn't think it was right to be scared out of hell. Well, let me say this. I got saved. It was real. That was, it was real as rain. The Holy Spirit convicted me. I seen myself burning in fire, just like I deserve, and I was ready for a Savior. Now, I was young, but I knew it was real, and I was saved, y'all, that young. Did I know everything? Absolutely not, but I got saved. Now, Pharaoh has been scared into admitting he sinned, thank goodness. So he tells him he's going to let him go, but, but he's only going to let the men go. They have to leave their children and their livestock there. And Moses says, no, that ain't going to work. So Moses brings in darkness. That's number, um, no, he brings in locusts next. The, after the locusts is when the Pharaoh said he'd only let the men go. So then he brings in darkness. It says for three days Israel had light. So there was light in the land of Goshen, but no light in Egypt. Isn't that an amazing God that he can make darkness fall over that whole area and have a beam of light over his people? I mean, my goodness, who wouldn't believe in it by then? And it said that Israel had light. Um, and then finally the Pharaoh says, go, take your little ones. But you can't take the flock. It's that hardened heart that God has gave him. So we're going to stop right there to chapter 11. In chapter 11, we are going to have the terrible, terrible. Because my husband. Tenth plague where the firstborn shall die. This is a big one, y'all. It is very important. Um, I want you to read 11 and 12. We're going to talk about... The firstborn dying, the tenth plague, and the Passover. This is critical, important doctrine that you should know as a Christian, that you should understand why it happened, the history behind it, and what it means, okay? So we will definitely talk about that. Now, tomorrow, my sister will be here cleaning. Um, I will try to get with y'all tomorrow night. If not, it may be Sunday or Monday, but you got plenty of time to study it, plenty of time to read it. But don't put it off just in case I do get to you tomorrow evening. But start looking at it and studying it. Now that you have a grasp on the history of why these people are in Egypt, why they need to get out of Egypt, um, what all God has already done to show who he is, what all has happened, then you'll understand the story even better. But I wanted to uh, come on here and encourage y'all before the weekend. Tell you how much I love you. Tell you how much God loves you. Tell you that Jesus is real, God is alive and well, and he is in control. If you're sad, if you're lonely, if the holidays get you down, um, and, there, and I can see why it does some people. I mean, I do miss my mama, but let me just say this. 
remember when um, Abraham wanted to get um, his nephew out of Sodom and Gomorrah and his wife looked back and she got turned into a pillar of salt. Now there's nothing wrong with memories and there's nothing wrong with grief. But there is something wrong if you let it take over your life. I've always been the kind of person, I've been through a lot, but I choose to look ahead and I choose to look at the good things and I choose to dwell on them. It is a choice that you make as an individual. It doesn't have anything to do with what you've been through, who you are, who's wronged you, uh, physically, mentally, whatever it is. You make a choice every day when you get up, whether or not you're going to live in that past or whether or not you're going to make a bright tomorrow. We have a holy God who has sacrificed his son so that we can live eternally in the heavens. We are part, part flesh and part in heaven with God already. And if you'll get in his word and you'll meditate about it, it will help you. He will help you, but you have to be ready and willing to believe. You have to be ready and willing to ask him to help you. And he will take some of that pain away if you let him. But you got to trust him and quit looking back, okay? And you got to do something for him, you know? Don't just sit on your hands with your candlestick, hold it up in the air, bless somebody. Um, I love my mother, and when I was a young girl, I think she was a very good witness for Christ. And I, I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to, I don't care what people think about what I say on here. But my mother, when I was a young girl, ministered to people, and she helped people, and she did things. But when she was an older woman, I'm telling you, if mama went to church, most of the time she was criticizing people for what they were wearing or what they sang or how they acted. Um, she criticized people on the TV. She criticized people when we went out to eat. She was a very critical person. And I strive because I was raised that way. I have to work hard not to be that way. It's not mama's fault. It's because mama lived in the flesh and she didn't get into the word of God and she didn't feed the Holy Spirit. I love her dearly. I think she's a wonderful person. She was a wonderful mother. I know that with Jesus in her, she could have been a much better witness. She could have been a much better mother. She could have been a much better grandmother. She could have been a much better Christian. And does that mean I'm putting myself on a pedestal? Absolutely not. But I've lived to see the difference in somebody that gets in the word and their attitude and somebody that don't. And now I'm going to be the first to tell you, there's a lot of Christians that have the worst attitude in the whole wide world. But I guarantee you, more than likely, they're not in the Word. They might know the Word. They might read it every once in a while. They may go to church every Sunday or every time the doors are open. But that don't mean that they're feeding the Holy Spirit at all. Okay? So I think I preached enough today. I hope that y'all have a blessed weekend. Y'all, don't turn around and turn into salt. Keep looking forward because God will use you. He will bless you. He will bless you. He will bless your family members. And don't think it's not important because one person affects so many people. This, my cooking show is about cooking. And you're around your family every day. And you're the one that, that they're going to want to come and sit at your table and dine. Are they going to want to come around somebody that's always mad or fussing or cranky or making fun of people or, you know, or are they going to want to come around somebody that tells them how beautiful they are and how wonderful they look and how, um, what a joy God was in their life this week. And let me tell you what God did. That is what we need to do.
so that people know that God is real, so that they want a part of his love. And I want to make a difference in people's life. I want to make a difference in my kids' life, in my grandkids' life, if God lets me live long enough to have them. Um, I want to hug my little grandbabies. I'll give anything to be able to pick up a grandbaby and kiss it and hug it and love it and tell it how beautiful it is. So, um, there's always tomorrow. Even if you don't have any family, you've got neighbors. You can go to church and find friends that are just like you. Um, you get out there and you be a light in this world. This is the perfect time of the year to do it. I hope you've enjoyed watching Real Southern Woman. I hope you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. If for any reason you don't know, understand it, you don't have to understand it. You just got to believe it. It never says in the Bible that you have to understand everything. It just says you got to believe. But if you're confused or you want to know more about the scripture or you want somebody to help you on the phone, be led to the Lord, I can help you do that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll read scripture to you right out of the word of God because I can't do anything for you, but this can. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this man, Moses, who you used, Lord, and put through so very much to prove that you are the God of this, the only God, the true God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son. We thank you for the age of grace that we live in so that we don't have to go kill a goat and put it up on an altar. We thank you for that precious blood that Jesus was our lamb. And he was that sweet, precious gift that you've given us. May we remember that this Christmas and throughout the season. May we look forward to tomorrow each and every day because you have been a God that gave it to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all have a good, good evening. Now I'm going to get ready to see my sister. Bye.